Right, this video is on how to actually use your Straka Line Professional Greens Guide. So as you can see up here, I've got the PDF on my computer. I'm going to walk you through that for Glen Wild Golf Club and Spa. The green grids are scaled at 3 8 inch equals 5 yards per square and are in compliance with the requirements of the rules of golf. We skip over a couple pages. Here's the information on Stracoline. If you would like to contact Stracoline to either purchase books or uh, have them come out and survey your greens at your golf course. Um, so we'll continue on. So <clears throat> um, here's some information on how to use it. So as we look at this particular paragraph, um, what you're going to be able to learn from this is that the greens were surveyed using a laser. It takes about seven minutes per green uh, to scan it, and um, they're able to to build um, a 3D model accurate to within you know one to three millimeters for every elevation change. So, as you look at the topography, right, which is these curving lines right here as it goes back and forth. Uh, you'll be able to see that the lines actually change in width, right? So if you look in this blue section, they're very wide apart. If you come over here to this pink section, they're very close. And what that is designed to do is to show you how quickly a, a rate of slope or percentage drop that happens. So, for example, in this pink area over here to the right, you can see... Uh, that this is a 5.1%, not degree, but percent change in slope over this space. When you go to the blue section right here, you'll see that it is a 1.2 in this area. So the percentage of slope changes 1.2% um, over this entire distance. Right? Whereas in this area, it changes 5.1% over a much shorter distance. So percent is the change in slope over a distance, whereas degree is the degree of slope at that exact point in time. So in the very back of the book, on the very, very last page, if you're using a level or if you're using um, like an aim point technique where you're using a, a level, uh, that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, it has a it has a chart in here. It basically converts the degrees, for example, top center, uh, a three degree angle that you're able to read on your level um, will equate to a 5.24% slope change. And that's very important if you are in fact using the, the Greens book by Stracoline and Aimpoint uh, because you've got to be converting those numbers and under, understanding uh, what that looks like. You don't want to get onto your Stracoline Green book over here and think that this 5.1 over here that we were just talking about a second ago, you don't want to assume that that is actually 5.1 degrees. Um, that's actually just under 3 degrees if we look at our chart conversion. So we, we saw that 3 degrees was 5.24%. So basically when you look at <clears throat> the green, there's a few things to take note here. Um, one is the depth. So if you look at the green here, it says it's 26.2 yards. Now this is in yards because... Most of the time, we're going to be using yards to calculate. When you use a laser rangefinder, uh, you're shooting targets. It's going to register in yards. You can see that um, the yards go from this dot here at the beginning, at the very bottom of the screen, and go in five-yard increments. So there's our first number five. So if we go up here from this dot, we're going to go one, two, three, four four, five. Okay, that's going to put us all the way up here. These other little dots around here are actually sprinkler heads. So you can find those sprinklers as you play the, the round and they'll be able to help you identify where that is. Um, so if you get all the way up here to the side of the green and you see that there's two sprinkler heads, 
you can see that the second sprinkler head is just short of the 20 yard mark. Okay, So when you're looking at your green, you can identify a few things. Understanding the grid, right? So these large grids over here, the bigger grids are in five yard increments, smaller ones are going to be in one yard. So um, from a big picture, you want to also look at the, the two things, the color and the arrows. I'm going to utilize um, this one where it kind of looks like an infrared spectrum where you go from a, a cool blue green um, to a, a red, orange, and pink. <clears throat> Most of the time when you play a golf course, um, your standard hole locations are going to be positioned somewhere in the blues and greens. Uh, where to have one in the orange and red and uh, pretty certain that you shouldn't find one in the pink section especially if the green speeds are faster than 10 feet on the stimp meter. Um, if you're interested in learning more about stimp meter readings you can look at one of my other videos on the Sabre Golf Putting Ruler helps you understand stimp meter readings. Um, but in this view of the yardage book, you'll be able to look at it and say, okay, well, these pink sections, golf ball should not be there. Uh, I'm sorry, a hole location should not be there. You may very well hit your golf ball and, la and land it in this area. Um, but again, if the green speeds are 10 or faster, there's a chance the ball will not stop on these pink sections. It'll probably roll into a red or green or blue. Now, good news is the faster the greens, the less chance your ball will have to stop on these higher um, slope sections, and there's definitely a good um, per, uh, a good chance that the hole location will not be cut here. If you play a golf course that has really slow greens, or maybe you're playing a golf course that transitions out of the winter season, early in the season sometimes the hole locations will be in these pink or red or orange sections and then as the summer progresses and green speeds increase they'll, te they'll tend to go into more of the green and blue sections so um, that's how you understand kind of what you're looking at as far as the grid as far as the colors are concerned um, to help you with the flow of that I want you to look at the arrows as well All right. so obviously we have the topographical contours we understand that wider spaces between those contours um, is a flatter or a, a section that has less slope. Tight little um, contours here will have a very severe slope. And then the arrows will actually show you and indicate which direction they're going. So if we uh, pick on this section here in the back right of the green, you'll notice that from the back right, these arrows are coming down and into the blue section and it's happening on both sides. However, once you've you know, entered into this blue section, those arrows then continue on feeding down into another blue section over here. So you have to pay attention to which direction the arrows are going, which will actually help you with your approach shots to the green as well as how to read the greens and putt on them. So we're going to continue on with this uh, series. Uh, we're moving from that particular uh, demonstration now into the practice screen. So if we go to our main practice screen here at Glenwild, it's a very, very simple one for our members to understand. As we all know, when you enter the putting green, uh, you are going to experience a, a general slope that moves, in this case, from south to north. So if I pull up Glen Wild, this is number one. I'm going to take us from number one back down the fairway all the way to the practice putting green so we can see exactly what we're looking at here. Okay, so here's the practice putting green, the big practice putting green we're talking about. And as we come down the cart path and typically park in this area or on that north side of the green, we step up onto the putting green, and we all know if you've ever putted on this putting green at Glenwild that this section across here is the high section, and pretty much every putt slopes across the green and goes down. And 
If you watched one of my earlier videos, you'll see why that is, because down here is um, a, a natural low point. Um, this is a wetlands area, and we want to push the water from the high point down to that wetlands. So let's take a look back at the Stracoline Green. As you can see here, pink across the edges, just like I described. And then as it moves, it's going to move down across the green. All of those arrows look like they're all pointing, in this case, from south to north. So this is the third video in the series. Um, just understanding a little bit more about the book, about the colors, about the arrows. Um, as we move into this diagram, <coughs> it gets even more specific as to where all these little arrows are going and really all the minor percentage changes from here on out. Uh, I'm going to spend most of my time in this series using these images because I feel like from a uh, basic level this is going to help us understand a little bit of strategy and green reading. If you want to get a little bit more specific, uh, I'm happy to work with you individually on understanding the book and learning how to read putts effectively using more detail. So uh, we'll finish this video. This is the third video in the series of, of introduction to better green reading. And the fourth video, we'll head straight to hole number one and figure out how to read that green. We'll see you soon.